So I had someone comment on a YouTube video uh, that they just couldn't sleep without carbs. And I wanna explain what that means and what to do. So if you've had insulin resistance in the past and you go on a ketogenic plan and you start cutting back your carbs, realize that if that insulin resistance has been there for a long time, it's gonna take a long time to get it corrected. It could take months, could take up to a year to fully get that stabilized. And what happens with insulin resistance is you have higher amounts of insulin. But when you do keto, you have lower amounts of carb. So the ratio of insulin to carbs are like this. You're still gonna have high insulin despite cutting the carbs out because of that resistance problem that's been there a long time and it does take some time. So that higher amounts of insulin could actually push the blood sugars down too low in the middle of the night. Now with low blood sugars, you have counter hormones that keep your blood sugars from going down too low. And the two main ones are cortisol and adrenaline. And these are for the adrenal. And try to sleep when you have adrenaline flowing through your bloodstream or even cortisol. If you look at the cortisol uh, circadian rhythm, it's the lowest at 2 a.m. in the morning. It's the highest at eight o'clock in the morning when you're supposed to wake up. And just realize that adrenaline is the hormone that will wake you up. So that's usually behind the situation, but what can you do about it? Well, realize that with time, this problem is going to get better if you stick with it, but you can do things to improve it. You could take electrolytes like potassium, magnesium, and calcium. These are very calming for the adrenal gland, cortisol and adrenaline. And also realize when you consume more vegetables, like at least seven cups, you're gonna be getting a lot of potassium, magnesium, vitamin C, things like that. Now, apple cider vinegar before bed is really good because this can help stabilize not just blood sugars, but it has the ability to lower insulin. And if you have lowered insulin, you're not gonna get this uh, massive push into the hypoglycemic range. So apple cider vinegar helps blood sugars, it helps reduce insulin, and improves insulin resistance. Number four, protein is a stimulant. So you wanna adjust the amount of protein that you consume as your last meal, because you may be consuming too much, which will stimulate your nervous system, and that alone can keep you up at night. We already mentioned the vegetables. B1, vital for sleeping. Not just being on a ketogenic diet and needing more B1 in your metabolism, but B1 is one of the key nutrients that involve energy production during the day, but at night help you prevent things like restless leg syndrome. It'll also help support your pulse rate because if you're low on B1, your pulse rate tends to go higher and higher and higher. Try to sleep if your pulse rate is really high. It's not gonna happen. B1 is also good for anxiety. It's also good to prevent nightmares. And it's really good if you have that excessive thinking 24 seven that kind of keeps you up as well. Also limit the caffeine in the coffee and the tea. I recommend just one small cup in the morning. And the last thing you may want to try is exogenous ketones. Those are ketone salts you can get online or from the health store. And if you took those before bed, it will feed your brain the ketones so your brain's not as dependent on the blood sugar so you have less of this going on. And lastly, vitamin D. People always tend to sleep better if they've been out in the sun during the day. And if, you're, if it's in the wintertime, basically just take some vitamin D and that will actually help you sleep as well. All right, thanks for watching and definitely check out more of the comprehensive videos that I have on the topic of sleep.